du compte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Allumage vulcain. Allumage à pied décollage. Roaring through the tropical sky, carrying juice on the first leg of her journey into space, and now she has disappeared under the crowd. You see there, in Kuru, there are many places from which to uh, to watch these launches. As you can see, the beach, uh, any place. Um, here we have we have a glimpse again of of the rocket. That's how it, it's an amazing uh, sensation for you as well, I'm sure. Yeah, you can see the clouds. It's the trajectory nominal. All the parameters of the are nominal. It's really, really always impressive and to be nothing to, to see it. So the video said that the trajectory is running on, which means that it's working perfectly. It's been as planned. Now the position is nominal, the pilotage is calm. And in fact, just to, to, to sum up what the DDA does in, in three words, his responsibility uh, is that he, he's the person who calls up every milestone along the way and he's in charge of providing uh, information on policy, guidance, and protection. Exactly. He's like an orchestra conductor, gathering all the information, summarizing it in real time, and soon we'll have booster separation. We're waiting for confirmation from the DDA. So the booster has been safely separated. This is great. Since we have Providing 90 percent of the overall thrust of the flight, so that is the main job. And then soon we have the separation of the ferry. And by the way, you see a special drawing on the ferry right here. Two runs around the world are asked to submit after the inspired, inspired by Jesus at the drone. And on this ferry, we see one type interpretation of Jupiter embracing. Our spacecraft. Everything is nominal. All parameters are in motion. And there we have it. We've seen it in our in our three D and we've just heard it from the video. Confirmed. So the film was used to protect the satellite from the friction of the air, but also from the noise generated during the ascent phase. We obviously need to safely separate the film. Um, otherwise, we would not be able to release this into space. It also means, it also means that we have crossed the limit of the atmosphere. So, this is on its way to be separated in about 24 minutes from now. So, by the way, we, we will have um, so the separation of the current program safe when it has placed. To venture on an intermediate orbit. After this, I can mention that during, and we can actually see it on the motion design, and because this is 3D animations here, and that during the ascent phase, the mercury is set in what we call a barbecue mode, so it's slightly rotating on itself at the speed of 0 0.7 degrees per second. To so do this so that every face of the satellite is equally exposed to the sunlight, we just want to avoid overheating in one particular side of the spacecraft, which could damage the instruments. And as a matter of fact, when the upper stage is going to be injected on the target orbit, it should also rotate at a speed of 0.5 degrees 
in one direction and then at the same speed in the other direction. Um, again, to avoid overheating on one part of the spacecraft, exactly like in a laboratory. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and of course, there are the onboard computers. What are they measuring right now, Raphael? Well, they optimize the trajectory in... Everything is nominal. So they optimize the trajectory in real time. They minimize the propellant assumptions to bring the launcher to the intermediate orbit targeted at the end of the main stage propulsion phase. And as a matter of fact, we are accelerating a lot right now. So within the next three to four minutes, we go from well, 3.5 kilometers per second to more than uh, seven kilometers per, per second. So how much is that per hour? Because you're That's the engineer. 25,000 kilometers per hour. And ultimately, this will be separated at the speed of almost, almost 10 kilometers per second. Uh, and uh, it will be separated at, at, at an altitude of 1,533 kilometers. Very precise. Okay. So the next milestone we are now waiting for, and we'll uh, be hearing this again from the DDO, is uh, the acquisition uh, by our downrange station of Natal. That is located in the, uh, on an island in the middle of the Atlantic. That is so great to hear that from the DDO. He may not have uh, confirmed it already, but that but by now it is going to explain all around the route. This route island is tracked from the ground. So the launchers functions in battle science by recording and sends back to a network of stations that keeps constant watch on the health of the launcher systems. And we have, we have the confirmation that the first... Apologies, of course, I did not mean Ascension, I meant Natal, okay. over the border in Brazil, of course. That's the second down main station. And just so you know, in all, that's about 1,500 parameters that is connected. Connected, my goodness. So that, there's no way these two can be The parameters can be analyzed in real time, that's right. What happens to them? But the complete analysis is carried out in the weeks following the launch by a dedicated team and they provide a wealth of information about how the vehicle performed during its mission and, and so this is why we constantly well, improve our knowledge of a launcher, launch after launch. And then that's why our impact is such a valuable launcher. Mm, and so you're talking about the uh the stations, and it's a little bit you were saying to me earlier when we were talking, it's like a new one of these stations, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he was listening to the video, what did he say? I didn't hear him. He said that all the parameters are working perfectly, no, 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 that's so the flight is perfectly smooth. So yeah, this is like a new race with one telemetry station passing the button to the next one, because we want to keep full visibility of the launcher in all dynamic phases of the flight, so the first station is to put back the data is kind of right here in Peru, mm -hmm. followed by Macau in Brazil, then we are at the island of Ascension in the middle of the Atlantic, and followed by Libreville in Gabon, and finally Malindi in Kenya. And the launch across the So we have three different very short sequences right now. Coming up, the cutoff of the main stage, you should hear that. The church is the main stage. And then the ignition of the other stage. So it should be confirmed. And the ignition coming up. That's a very big news. That's a very important step. You can see the smile on the face, you can't because we're in a little booth. Because we forgot to mention that we are now in the sky booth, uh, where we have a fantastic view over Jupiter, uh, where we can see uh, the clouds gathered. And uh, yes, so you cannot see the smile on the first stage, but he is delighted that this uh, stage has gone perfectly. Yeah, the elevation of the uh, upper stage is absolutely key, uh, because it's always quite a little bit tricky to develop a liquid stage in the emptiness of space. Of, of space, sorry. I told you that on the ground we wait for 
15 seconds to check whether Vulcan engine is correctly ignited before, before lift off. But it's, it's, it's not possible to do that. Uh, you cannot send somebody to repair the, the engine. Also in zero gravity, the propellant is floating in all directions. The thermal environment is also not the same as it is on the ground. So, you know, uh, there are many factors that make it quite Avec challenging and complex to inert the engine in space. So, uh, we were mentioning earlier, this is the penultimate Ion 5 launch, which for more than a quarter of a century has provided Europe with reliable and independent access to space, which is, as Alpha I was talking about earlier, Ion 6 will be taking over. Europe's best engineers are building on the success of Ion 5, and there's already a fully integrated <laughs> Ion 6 on the launch pad right here in Kourou. Uh, Kourou. You're going to tell us about that, Raphael. So, take, can you take us through the latest developments Absolutely. with Ion 6? So last, last year was quite exciting for Ion 6 uh, with the start of the, what we call the combined test corresponding to the meeting between the launcher and the launch pad here at the World Spaceport. Here we see a fully representative version of Ion 6 which has been assembled with the main core raised vertically directed on the launch pad. The upper composite was then hoisted and mated on top of the launcher. This operational scheme is actually a big difference with respect to what is done with Ion 5. It is made possible thanks to this mobile drone crew, which will obviously be unique during launch. And also, 2023 is going to be also busier for Ion 6, obviously. In January, the launcher was connected to the control bench, and the first power test was performed. Then dry run will be performed, followed by the actual fielding operations of the central point. Teams will also perform hot firing tests of the lower stage in June, Vulcan 2.1, including a long firing test. And hot firing tests of the upper stage were successfully performed in 2022 and beginning of 2023 in Lincoln's housing at the German Aerospace Center, but once are under preparation. The launcher elements that will be used for the Ion 6 first flight will arrive in Canada using the new generation Canadian vessel, which will be equipped with sails and hybrid propulsion, so that we can start the first real launch campaign of Ion 6. And so today, the prototype of Ion 5, Ion 6 sorry, stands on the launch pad, ready to continue the command test. So good luck for this very ambitious and incredible program. And Raphael, um, we heard that while you were explaining all of this, we heard that the video yeah, called up lots of signal with the Natal tracking station. Now, there we go. Uh, uh, didn't, we didn't hear that they've been, been picked up by the next station. Is that normal? This is perfectly normal. Uh, we have quite visibility holes during long dynamic phases of the launch. In this case, we have no visibility for just 63 seconds before the ascension ground station speaks the signal back. So this should come in any seconds. The timing is perfect. Confirmed. So we've been picked up by, by the next downhill station, that is uh, Ascension, the tiny little island in the south of the is No, no, I think the is telling us. So from what I understand, uh, going back to Ion 6, there's a very healthy order book already for Ion 6 launches like that. Yeah, Ion 6 is already quite successful in the market. We've already 28 launchers sold for both institutional and commercial customers. It, it is a very um, versatile, flexible launcher, perfectly suited for complex missions and satellite constellation deployment thanks to its high lift of capability and it's really good at the same time. And uh, it's, nice to, uh, it's nice to hear the regular updates from the DDO that everything is going to plan. For those of you who are joining us, Alan 5 lifted, lift, yeah, sorry, lifted off 14 minutes ago, just over 15 minutes ago, from the European Spaceport here in French Guiana, carrying ESA's Jupiter and Simmons Explorer into outer space. We're bringing you this live show from the Jupiter Control Room, where the operational teams are overseeing the mission's progress. This is due to separate in about 13 minutes' time, but this is just the start of its long journey on its way to Jupiter. Let's find out more about the tech on board that will help it fulfill its mission. La 
Wir werden für, für dies das Reward provide the propulsion system for this, which ensures that after leaving the launcher, it arrives correctly at Jupiter's moon and can work properly there. It's a fascinating thing, especially because the technical requirements of such a long journey, with so many constraints to consider, challenge each of us in a unique way. Engineers have devised advanced technological solutions so that Juice can operate in extreme environments, face Jupiter's high radiation belt, the long distance and harsh temperatures. Its two and a half meter diameter antenna will send the data Juice collects back to mission control, although it can take close to an hour to travel to Earth. The European mission Juice is going to be a real revolution. Its collection of valuable data will be used by scientists for years to come and help unlock some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. So, Rafael, this is an emblematic European science mission. So, what is it about this particular mission that inspires you as a rocket scientist? Well,
Bonjour, je m'appelle Victoire de Montcourt, je suis de la française, je suis de travaille chez Aran Espace. My name is Rossella and uh, I originally come from Italy. My name is Oliver Kroll and I'm a German rocket engineer working for Ariane Group in Germany. I'm Italian and I'm a telecommunication engineer. Je suis espagnol, je viens de la ville de Madrid et ça fait trois ans que je travaille au centre spatial du Yanné. Je suis chargé euh, du suivi en temps réel du lanceur et de la mission et de vérifier son bon déroulement afin de rassurer à la fois les personnes qui travaillent sur le lanceur et évidemment les clients. In Peru, uh, during the launch campaign uh, of this, uh, our goal is to check all the final functional tests, so all the final checks uh, after the transport of the satellite uh, here in Peru and before the launch. I'm responsible for the follow-up of the stage integration up to the launch, the treatment of technical anomalies with an end-to-end -end view, the technical consistency of all information, and the on-site presence in Peru during launch campaign. Je travaille à la sauvegarde des vols. Mon rôle le jour J consiste à surveiller la trajectoire du lanceur et le sautillement à bord. Et si on constate que la mission ne cesse d'être nominale, on pourrait être amené à intervenir pour assurer que tout se passe en sécurité pour les biens et les personnes et aussi maîtriser leurs risques. And afterwards, uh, to make sure that uh, the test campaign goes uh, as planned and uh, that the spacecraft will perform as uh, expected in one space. If I want to define uh, team spirit uh, in three keywords, uh, I can say the first one is um, collaboration, the second keyword is coordination, and then the third keyword, which is the, the most important for me, is to have fun. Uh, it helps uh, overcome the difficulties and uh, and obstacles. So uh, yeah, for me this is the most important part. So we are coming up to just yeah, coming up to 22 minutes after liftoff, which means that in just over five minutes. This will be separating from the mothership and starting its own life in space. Rafael, can you give us an update on where we're at right now? So everything is working perfectly. So we have the line in the to the position. So in the past five minutes, we went from 190 kilometers to more than 500 kilometers of altitude. So it now has a speed of 9.6. typically launches geostationary transfer orbit launches, so uh, here this MEG is obviously much, much farther on the scope orbit. How is this different? How does it differ, for example, from launching a telecom satellite, to many of the satellites that are launched without the launch site? Well, the energy to put out to the spacecraft by the launcher is uh, higher, it needs to escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. Also, for geostationary uh, launches, we usually have the right window. Uh, typically 15 minutes to one hour and a half, let's say, during which we can try and launch. And today's mission we set up a rendezvous mission, and there was no launch window. It was what we call an instant launch, so we had to launch the exact uh, time. So this is why uh, everything has to go smoothly within the weather uh, before launching. Also, um, a deal with the geostationary orbit usually happen in the evening. Today we launched in the morning, meaning that the team has been working all night during the final countdown. And also, um, we had to slightly adapt the feeling of the tanks of the upper stage to the cryogenic propellant. Our dementia was expressed to the sun since early morning, 6 a.m. So the sun heats and increases the pressure of the tanks. So we have to slightly underload it by 120 tons, which is yeah. Yeah, it's okay. uh, So how is it the dismissal in itself different in terms of preparation? Well, uh, we need to take extra care in terms of cleanliness, 
because before before leaving the Earth, we want to know exactly what kind of biological material this takes with it in Kent's Kiana, and there were several institutes which took samples from Greece in the various satellite preparation rooms. Uh, of course, most of the microbes will be sterilized in space, washed out by space radiators, but some can survive. Here, here we see on the image His Majesty the King of Belgium and His Royal Highness Prince Gabriel. And they, they are here as uh, VIP guests because uh, Belgium has contributed uh, rather um, uh, importantly towards uh, the preparations for Greece. Um, so we were talking about, uh, we were looking at the, the, uh, the, the difference in preparation, yeah. weren't we? The second main difference is that, you know, Greece will perform very precise and very clear me measurements along the mm -hmm. the main activity. Mm -hmm. And we have to measure many times the magnetic environment of Greece during the launch campaign on the ground to make sure that in space it will measure only the magnetic environment of the and not its own magnetic field. Because it has a very, very strong magnetic field, of course. Exactly. Um, okay, and so uh, in the nutshell, looking at the time, oh, we actually have. Oh, I haven't heard it from the video, did you? So right now, uh, we are in the stage where the um, upper stage is performing flight or jumping maneuvers to separate the spacecraft in a very specific direction. It's important to do so on time in a very precise way as it could really drive the satellite injection accuracy and have an impact on the rest of the spacecraft that time in space. Just to give you an idea of me, this is a trajectory correction maneuver. And so the better the injection procedure, the less important the maneuver is going to be, meaning that this will be able to save a special fuel for the rest of the mission. And Raphael, we are 30 seconds away from separation. Uh, what are we going to see exactly? And then we'll Stop the commentary and wait for the moment. I mean, the value that this is pretty um, animation here, but the, the teams are receiving signals and information in real time. And it is then we will confirm the separation of the teams and its liberation orbits. We will provide all necessary information to either teams so that they can inquire the discussion. Let's wait for confirmation from the team. And this has been confirmed that the spacecraft is safely separated on its targeted orbit. And you can